This Ref 3 Games episode is brought to you by Ting, mobile that makes sense. Okay. If Nick tries to touch you inappropriately at any point, you can come stay at my I place. I swear to God, I'm not going to do anything other than if he has a crotch tent, sometimes you got to tamper that down. God. Like dirt. Why? Tamper it down. So I've been thinking mm. lately about that downloadable content. The DLC. <laughs> the DLC that they do on the, the video game system. Yeah, it's a big um, thing these specifically, days. Specifically, how weird it's been to watch Nintendo just like slowly, slowly just dip like just the just the tail end tip of their pinky toe in the water on this stuff. Tail like, end tip. Just so gradually, just like grazing it. Like they, they didn't even penetrate the water, they're just all surface Oof. tension. They're you just, mean Oof. for Mario Kart? Mario or Kart, DLC in but general. But like in general, right? Like they've done they've sort of experimented with it before. I did a video well, on that Rusty's Real Deal Baseball thing that was like yeah. their first free-to-play game. Yeah. Uh, there was really good Fire Emblem Awakening DLC that I loved a lot. But They did the Luigi, new Super yeah. Luigi. That was awesome. That was super cool. That was the um, way that well, DLC Well, they just discovered the internet existed for the first time, <laughs> so they have to try all this new stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, but like I gotta say, man, like the Mario Kart DLC that they recently announced mm. sounds kind of really tight. It's like... It's two packs. One of them is coming out like later this year, and then the other one's like May 2015, yeah. like basically a million years from now. But the they're like we're doing weird crossover shit. We're like pack one has Link mm -hmm. from the Legend of Zelda. Which is totally awesome. I yeah. love so the villager. The, what's weird is that they've spaced it out really cleverly in that like pack one is like Tanuki suit, Mario, Peach in a cat outfit, and then Link. Because they're like fucking, we'll put Link in there. They'll bite no matter what. It doesn't yeah. even matter what the other characters are. Just recycle the models from New Super Mario or New Super Mario 3D World. Uh, and then the villager one is packed in with, um, I think it's like Dry Bones version of Bowser and some other guy. But uh, I think each of the packs has eight tracks included with it. Whoa, I didn't know about the tracks super actually. Cool. Like they're increasing the amount of huh. tracks in the game by 50%. They're adding wow. 16 levels. Yeah, like it's legit like a big DLC pack, yeah. which is like totally I, like, unexpected for, and I don't know, from Nintendo for me. Yeah, it's seriously, like it, it changes the size of the game. And then they're eight bucks each, but I think you can get them both for 15 or something. And then they're doing another even weirder, even more un nintendo -y thing where when you pre-order, if you pre-order and you have to pre-order to get this, you immediately unlock like eight or nine different colored skins for Yoshi and Shy Guy. Um. So you can pick any color Yoshi you want, any color Shy Guy, but it's just like, this is like, there was a time I remember when they were coming out and just being like, nah, fuck down level content, we're never gonna do that, I hate that, it's garbage, yeah. never gonna happen on the DS, and then the 3DS they started. Do you, do you think this like, there's pressure because of maybe the weak Wii, Wii U sales that they have to like monetize in every way um, possible? I, I mean, I don't, I personally am like really excited that there is, cool. this, there is gonna be DLC like this. It makes the game last so much longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of perfect for a game like Mario Kart mm -hmm. because you, it's the type of game that you play over and over and over again. It's really easy to get sick of certain levels and yeah. want more. Yeah. Like eight bucks also is totally reasonable. Yeah. It's yeah. not like 15 or 20 bucks like most levels. DLC packs. It's yeah. funny too, cause like, cause I've, I've feel the way you feel where I'm just like, I feel like I've seen every track in Mario Kart 8 a hundred times at this point. Um, but what's, what's really cool about it though is that like, there are two things about this that are emblematic classic Nintendo things. A, being a little slow to catch on the internet thing, and B, when they finally do do it, they do it in like a weird, cool way that's really consumer friendly. Like right. all of us are acknowledging yeah. that this is a pretty awesome deal. It's really It's good. just, I, I don't know, I feel like it's very, they did, when they now that they're finally doing DLC, they're doing it in a way that is at least like consumer friendly. Like I want to buy DLC. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I typically resist buying DLC unless yeah. it's for a game that I'm really, really into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like DLC like historically started as like the the trashiest way to get you to spend more money, mm -hmm. and then yeah. slowly as it, like yeah. people figured out like, oh wait, people do want more content. We just have to like give them something that's actually worth paying. You remember horse armor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Remember horse, horse armor? armor was ridiculous, but a lot a lot of the reason that people were upset about it is because they felt like they were withholding that content from yeah. the yeah. original game. Totally. Right. You can't really say that with like a, a, a pack of like eight tracks. Because, yeah. I mean, it's very substantial. Like, exactly. Maybe the colored Yoshi skins were something that were in there. Sure. Possibly at some point, but like for the most part, I feel the exact same way. And it's like, it's also like I want to. I like Mario Kart 8 so damn much, I'm down to give them a few more bucks for a little bit more Mario Kart 8. It's the same thing with like like Shovel Knight. So that game was a Kickstarter game, and when mm -hmm. they exceeded their goal, part of their thing was like, we're gonna add three playable campaign missions that are completely free to everyone. You can play as the bosses from the different campaigns yeah. in their own unique campaigns. I'm like, that sounds sick. Yeah. But it's gonna be free? 
and I kind of want to pay for it? Hmm. Is that fucked up? Like, sometimes there's just a part of me where, like, DLC is a good avenue to support the games that you really love. Yeah. I bought DLC for Pac-Man Championship Edition Deluxe for no damn reason. I didn't want yeah. it. I just love that game. Yeah. I feel like that's that's a weird choice. Yeah. It's unusual, I think. But oh, yeah, for definitely. Shovel Knight, I mean, they only did that, right, because people donated above and beyond mm. what they were asking. Yeah. So technically, they did get paid for They it. did, but I didn't donate to the Shovel Knight Kickstarter. And oh. now I feel like well, now I have... Well, you're part of the problem. I guess so. You know, I'm so excited that Nintendo's actually finally getting to this, because I really would love to see DLC for Super Smash. And, like, just yeah. down the road, like, new characters or, new, or just new anything, really. Because, like, the, the thing about Nintendo games, like, all the ones I love, I play them forever because they're so good yeah. and so well made and just have a new map, new character to play, something that new to unlock, just like is gonna make it that much totally. more enjoyable yeah. and so I can I can actually make it to the next game that they make, the next Super Smash. Those uh that's a classic thing with Nintendo too, like is their games, their used game prices never ever drop because A, Nintendo almost never drops prices on their first party stuff. Right. Because no one ever sells it back. Because those games you can play yep. like eternally. And if those Smash Brothers leaks are true, they're already going to be doing DLC characters for Smash 4. Right. I think like Snake was announced as a downloadable guy and a couple others. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but like, hell yeah, DLC for Smash, I would absolutely buy everything they put out for it. And I think a lot of people would. Yeah. Do you have any DLC in particular that either of you like actually remember buying and enjoying? Any favorites or um, least favorites? I remember I bought the the extremely controversial uh, Mass Effect DLC mm. uh, for the third game. The one that had the alternate ending? Uh, I don't, did it have the alternate? No, 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 not that one actually. It was the one with the the alien, the um... The extra character. Extra What's character, that was the, the race that was before the everyone. The ancient one, yeah. Was it yeah. Citadel? No, this was, no. although the Citadel thing seemed really cool. Yeah. Um, but no, you're talking about, it was like right alongside Mass Effect 3, they put out DLC that, yeah. I think was, it might have been for- launch. Yeah, and it was also in the collector's edition or oh, something. Oh, right. I know what you're talking about. Which is like, you know, I get the controversy uh, with, you know, like basically the content was made and day people one felt, DLC. Yeah, day one DLC is, is tough and controversial in general, but uh, I really did like that DLC. I yeah. really did like having that additional character. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I, I bought it. Maybe it should have come with the game, but yeah. I really enjoyed it. How much was it? it? Do you remember? Um, I have no idea. More than $5. Yeah, I think it was like 10? Maybe 15. I don't know. I think the DLC somewhere. I've enjoyed most was uh, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep oh, yeah. for Borderlands 2. Cause that was like, that's exactly what I want out of DLC. It kind of changes the entire feel of the game. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, a few extra missions in like a new area or something. It was like vastly different from the original game, but with all the same humor and everything that like gives it the Borderlands feel. So I think that was the best one. The rest of the Borderlands uh, 2 DLC was kind of like meh. Mm. A lot of it was just like added campaign missions and pretty boring in general. Um, the extra but characters it also, though were really great. It, yeah, it was. Um, the Burial at Sea DLC for oh, yeah. Bioshock Infinite was Oh yeah. I cool. wanted to like that so bad because yeah. it was so it was such a cool idea like going back to Rapture in kind of an alternate universe but it just something about it irked me and I can't tell if it was the fact that it was too short it was only mm. like an hour and a half and I just it took so long for it to come out that yeah. I really wanted more from it but I also never played the second part of it mm. so I don't know how the story wrapped up. I think in general though I feel the same way as you where the DLC that I value most in hindsight is the DLC that completely wipes the slate clean of what you thought you knew about the game. Like mm -hmm. Red Dead Redemption's Undead Nightmare exactly. stuff. Exactly. Uh, I know Blood Dragon wasn't DLC, but like oh, yeah. stuff yeah. like that where it's just like, oh yeah, no, we took everything you thought you knew about this and threw it out the window and made something really weird and experimental yeah. and non-canonical that's just for fun, like just for fun. I also think Skyrim had some really good DLC. Even mm -hmm. the ones that I was a little lukewarm about, like I can't remember the name of it, the one where you um, can become like a vampire. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. That one wasn't actually a really great DLC, but it was really awesome that they added like a completely new path you could go down. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, that's such an important part of the game. And then uh, Dragonborn came out and that like blew everyone away. It was yeah. so good. It was so good. It, there's a whole new island. It was awesome. God, but how tight would it be if they had done Skyrim DLC where it was just like, now there's cars or just like, <laughs> something stupid like that, like a helicopter. Yeah. That would, I mean, I guess that's why PC gaming exists. It's, yeah. It's modded that in, I'm sure, but. Yeah. Being able to ride a dragon was a pretty big deal when mm -hmm. they added that. Yeah. It's true. Totally nuts. Fuck that one about an airplane. Skyrim. <laughs> Can we just go play Skyrim? 
right now. I actually do miss that game. Really? I need I need another Elder Scrolls game, real bad. I think I think it's Fallout's turn, and then when Fallout happens, then you'll get your Elder Scrolls. Fine. Anyone with a cell phone knows just how expensive they can be to maintain. Most carriers come with hidden fees, little to no customer service, and they charge an insane amount of money regardless of how much data you actually use. But not Ting. Ting is a new cell phone service that only charges you for the data you actually use. It supports an unlimited number of devices, including the ones you already own. And best of all, their customer service is top notch. Never again will you be forced to talk to a series of robots. No matter what time of day you call, you'll get a real live human on the other line. And did we mention that it's cheap? The average Ting customer pays only $21 a month for one device. Head over to rev3games.ting.com and click on their savings calculator to see just how much money Ting can save you. That URL will also get you $25 off your first bill. And remember, every sign up helps support Rev3 Games and puts money back in your wallet. Good jump, good jump. Oh, they're coming together. Uh oh, uh oh. That it's, guy gun just straight up ran out of bullets. You got oh like you got uppers. Everything. You got, got uppers. uppers. Dude, you, that's actually the right call. I know. I'm in heaven right now. I'm learning. But so is that is that the other term for it? That's hell. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what every other shooter is like. What are you doing? I'm, I'm wall banging. 